and hello YouTube, this is GS Man with Smart, and I'm a brand new video for Tutorials with GS. Today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create a 3D icon, and it's going to be a really cool tutorial because there's going to be a lot of techniques in this tutorial that you can actually carry over to other designs. So I do encourage you to take note of the techniques that I'm doing because there's a lot of them here that are very useful for other designs that you may be creating in GIMP. We haven't done a GIMP tutorial in quite a while because I've sort of been focusing on the other software programs. We have tons of GIMP tutorials. If you want to check those out, I have an annotation and a card on screen right now. Definitely recommend you do so. And uh, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. The first thing we're going to do is create a new image canvas. So I'm going to go up to the uh, File button, click New. And I'm going to go ahead and create a 400 by 400 image. That should be okay. A nice little square to work with. Next thing we're going to go ahead and do is create a new layer. Always don't work on new layers. Never work on your background layer because that is destructive editing. We want to do non-destructive editing. Make sure it's transparent. Go ahead and click OK. And this is going to be our sort of our main layer or at least our background layer for now. I'm going to go ahead and create a box, a little rectangle. I'm going to use my rectangle tool here. If you want to have a perfect square, square hold down the shift button. That will create a perfect square. Is this big enough? Maybe not. It's a little a little bigger like so. That's fine right there. And I'm going to go ahead and add rounded corners if you want to do that on your tools options here. Go ahead and click rounded corners right here. And then you can uh, select which value you want. I'm going to go ahead and get a value of 40. I think that's good. And then we're going to go ahead and get a color for our for our little square here I think I'm gonna be using let's use black and we're gonna fill in our selection here so this is gonna be our background for the icon that we're creating after that we're gonna add some more to our icon right now we just have a plain old box I'm gonna go ahead and create some lightning we're gonna grab our path tool here and the path tool is a really powerful tool uh, make sure that you have your paths dialog open as well, which is in the dialog box right here. Uh, my paths is, well, if you don't have your paths dialog, which I don't think I have mine right now, go ahead and click windows at the top, then go to dockable dialogs, click paths, and it'll open up right here. So make sure you have your path tool selected. And you want to do this once again on a new layer, always things on a new layer. If you want to rename this to uh, lightning, that's fine and here we're just gonna draw a cool little lightning bolt so give me a second now once you get to the last uh, dot the last selection node on your path hold on the control button and go ahead and click the last node there and you'll basically finish the selection you do have design edit and move tools down here in the bottom left corner and tools options you can use those if you need the design one will basically allow you to move the nodes around the edit tool or you will allow you to add new nodes like so it'll also allow you to create uh, curves around the current nodes that you have by just cl clicking and holding on them uh, click and hold and then you can move them around like so to create curves and then you have the move tool which will allow you to move your entire selection around like that and I think we're actually gonna do that sort of like that I think that's okay right there and the next step we're gonna do is go ahead and click selection from path right here and that will basically create a selection around your path if for at any point you lose your path you feel like your path is gone just go ahead and go to your path to path dialog box right here right click it and click path tool and that will basically allow you to edit again you can also view your path by making it visible here but we don't need to do that right now so what we're gonna do is grab our paint bucket tool make sure we have some sort of yellow that we want to use for this lightning bolt so perhaps something like that's okay I'm gonna fill it up like so and I, I really don't like that bolt so let me go ahead and redo that real quick so there we got a little bit of a better bolt than the one we had before after that, what I'm going to do is go ahead and make the, the bolt a little more 3D already. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, lightning bolt layer. Go ahead and duplicate it once. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab the duplicate layer. Get my move tool and just move it down a bit. And move it over a bit. And you'll see that this creates 
uh, this duplicate effect that makes it look like we have two lightning bolts. But what you'll see, we're actually going to make this look 3D by grabbing our paint bucket tool and changing the color of this a bit. We're going to go ahead and make this a little lighter than what we have now, like this. And right click the duplicate, click alpha to selection. And then just go ahead and grab your paint bucket tool and fill it in like so. Now you'll have this weird effect where the duplicate is on top of the original. Just go ahead and grab the layer, move it down, and you'll have it like so. Now we have these weird jagged edges here. The way we're going to fix this is by grabbing our paths tool here. And the same thing, we're going to make a new path. And this time we're going to work on our duplicate layer here. And just try to do a path like I'm doing right now. Doesn't need to be too fancy. We just want to get rid of these weird uh, jagged edges here where it looks like we have a duplicate. Use the uh, selection from path again after you've made this path. Grab the paint bucket tool and just fill it in. If it doesn't fill in, go ahead and grab the uh, paintbrush tool and just color over it like so. And you'll see that fixes our jagged edges problem. And we're going to do the same thing on the bottom here. Grab our paths tool again, like so. And similarly, selection from path, grab our paintbrush tool and fill it in like so. Then select none. Now you'll see it looks like we actually have a uh, 3D lightning bolt. If you don't like how the color is a little too bright, if you want to make it darker, you can easily do that by right clicking alpha the selection again and you can change the color to your preference if you want to have uh, for example uh, this color as your paint bucket tool but i like this color right here that's fine with me now one other thing i want to do to this lightning bolt is create a stroke around our main uh, around our base lightning bolt so i'm going to grab the first layer right here and once again alpha to selection we have a selection around our main bolt and create another new layer and this is going to be our stroke so i'm just going to name this stroke make sure it's transparent again and this time i'm going to grab a darker color than this perhaps something like that click the ok button and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill the selection in with a new color after we have our color picked and we have our alpha selection done then we're going to go to select and shrink by two pixels and then control x to cut and what you'll see is we have a nice little stroke around our lightning bolt here if you want to use the blurred tool to blur it out a bit you can do so oops that's not the blur tool the blur tool is right here and if you want to use the blur tool to blur out the edges a bit you can do that that way it doesn't look so artificial but there's basically our lightning bolt. It looks 3D on top of the, on top of the uh, black uh, box that we have in the background. Now, next thing we want to do is go ahead and merge all these layers down. Right click the layer one by one and click merge down, merge down, merge down. Now, after you have it all merged down, we're going to go ahead and create a drop shadow. Go up to filters, then lights and shadows and click drop shadow. Now, you can play around with these settings if you want. Um, however, I already have these presettings like this. I'm going to see what it looks like. If I like it, I'll keep it. If I don't like it, I'll change them around. But basically, opacity here changes how opaque or how prominent the shadow is. It's very dark or very light. The color obviously changes the shadow. The blur radius will just be how large you want the shadow to be, how, how big of a radius you want the shadow to blur out. And then X and Y offset just changes the position of it. So I'm going to go ahead and see what this looks like. And to me, that looks pretty good. So I'm actually going to go ahead and keep that. And after that, we're just going to go ahead and create a reflection. So I'm going to go ahead and right click merge down. I want to keep this drop shadow. You see now we have an entire layer here. And what I'm going to do next is grab my move tool and just move this up a bit. So we have some room for the, for the reflection at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. Uh, duplicate here we go and then I'm gonna move this down a bit and grab my flip tool and make sure you're flipping it vertically 
like so. And then just move it down to the bottom. Make sure that things align properly like so. And now what we're going to do is right click the duplicate layer. We have it uh, flipped vertically and right click and click add layer mask here. And make sure you have white selected. Click add, grab our gradient tool here and make sure we have black selected as the foreground and white selected as the background. And what we're gonna do then is zoom out a bit and zoom into the bottom half of the image. I'm gonna grab my zoom tool here and zoom into the bottom half of the image and grab our gradient tool here again. And we're just gonna go ahead and draw a straight line from the bottom to around the top of that layer. You can hold the control button down to draw straight lines. And if we let it go, you see we have sort of a, a, a reflection create there, but it's a bit too prominent. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bigger. And maybe I wanna have a little more, something like that. And I can go ahead and change the opacity of this as well. If I wanna change the opacity here, that's fine too. Like so perhaps, or probably like that. That's good right there right around there. And then if you want to get rid of the white background, you can do so and you'll still have everything else here and it won't affect the main picture. Then you can go ahead and merge this down as well. And there you have it. We have our 3D looking button. We have a nice drop shadow. We have the uh, 3D lightning bow, which fits very nicely on top of the black background. And then we have a reflection at the bottom here. And you could then use this on your website or if you want to use it as a desktop icon though i think you may need to make it a little smaller but that's basically it hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial hopefully you got some techniques out of this this was just something cool that i wanted to do that had several different techniques within the video and perhaps you took some of it with you also i just want to throw out there since i've thrown it out on all my other channels uh, if you know how to draw some cartoons or if you're good at drawing, I'm looking for someone to do a cartoon version of me. Uh, you can see how I actually look on my main channel on GS Man Smart. I'm trying to get some new channel art done. I've had this channel art for quite some time now. I want to change it. So if you're interested in that, if you know how to do it, go and leave a comment section below. And uh, I'd appreciate it. And that's pretty much for this video. Thank you for watching. As always, plenty of other GIMP tutorials as I said in the beginning of the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, go and do so. Plenty of other software tutorials and content coming in the future. Any questions or comments about the video, anything that I did in the video, go and leave a comment section. Go and leave a comment below, and I'll definitely try to answer your question. And like I said, a lot of these techniques can be applied to different designs, so I encourage you to try them out with different designs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how to videos, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. And if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too, really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social media as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much everyone. And this is GS Man Smart and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.